I should say, how are you finding the holiday package? <laughs> Especially the parents, like the holiday package are fun to your kids, are coming back home and all that. By the way, I might say kudos, there are some parents I've actually seen, they have started engaging their children in so many interesting projects like bonding with their children, getting to know them, dating them, like teaching them some skills. Thank you so much. You are doing great. And there are those specific parents. I know you are watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are doing exactly what your child needs from you. You are creating uh, golden memories. Like there are those things I remember we used to do with our parents back then when we were growing up, like having some play nights. We used to have games. Uh, movie nights and I really those memories can't get off my head then they keep me moving and they keep me yearning to explore or discover more parenting bonding ideas so thank you so much the parents who are doing that and happy holidays on the other hand happy belated Mother's Day mothers we are doing so great and thank you to all those who shared wonderful messages give to their mothers who pay tribute to their mothers who are not in this life thank you thank you so much mothers are really doing great in our communities and i hope you also learn from them and be a better mother in this journey now um, most parents have been asking me some questions how you know with, within the remaining few weeks uh, how they can be able to engage with their children they really want to engage with their children because they feel like there is that gap that needs to be a field between the parents, the guardians, and their children. Children are really drawing away. Actually, they are withdrawing from their parents, from their guardians, just because they have not been given much attention, much consideration. And this is the reason as to why most of, for those people who watched my previous video about uh, ghosting, dangers of ghosting your children, you know, not giving them attention, ignoring them. So parents were like, they, there is need. And I've even seen, I've, I've, I've heard from parents who are recommending their children. I've been having, you know, um, a fixed timetable, meeting up with their children, trying to talk them, getting to know them. And actually, some of them have opened up, and this has helped me even to help some parents who have, who have reached out for some uh, parenting services. Thank you so much for reaching out, and I hope that really, really things change between you and your children. Thank you so much. Yeah, so how to engage with your child, how to engage with your child during this holiday is something very, very interesting and something very, very amazing that you should put as, as you should prioritize in all ways. So some, some, of the par some of our parents, you know, we work and, you know, of course, without work, we really can't make it, we can't provide for our children. So uh, one thing, like, I have... Um, Five ways, I have five ways uh, through which you can engage with your children during the holidays. I think you, you can't fail to pick one. You know, out of all these five, so I'm going to be reminding you always and always at least to get one way, you, you know, one way to apply, uh, to apply as a parent. So how to engage with your children during holidays, your child or your children during holidays. Number one is return home earlier to bond with their children. So some of our parents, you know, they leave very early at 5, uh, 5.30, 5 a.m. when the kids are sleeping. And they come back later at around 10, 11 when the kids are sleeping. So they really don't have that time to bond with their children, to get to know them. By the way, we also have parents who don't know their children's favorite snack, their children's favorite food, anything, because for them, they feel like they are primary responsibility is to make sure there is food at home, there is someone to take care of them. But, this is something very interesting, come back home early or find one day in a week where you spend much of the time with the kids. Look at them, get to discover their talents, get to discover their weaknesses before even you start judging them for what went wrong. Get to bond with your children, play with them, have some games with them, have uh, activities with them, cook with them. So. There are quite a number of um, things you can do in the process of bonding. So come back home early. We are all busy. Everyone is, we all have 24 hours in a day. We are all busy. But it's very, very important 
to always create time for your children because there is no perfect time for doing things but once you create time for your children at the end of the day you will get good results from it number two identify areas where your children need your support yes you know, our children need support they need to be loved they need to be supported they need to be I'm one of the parents i'll say that um, i know my daughter's weakness um, my daughter can't fight both my daughter can't fight both verbally and physically so that's so i make sure that i'm present so that other kids don't take advantage of her so even when someone beats her up or insults her i always you know when she comes to me to report i'm always available i'm always present so I think that's her sickness and I actually need support there. I, I, I'm really trying to help her um, learn how to live in an environment with, with, with such a kid that, okay, when this happens, this happens. So our children need support in so many things. Some might be very slow in doing things, like a, a kid can spend like one hour doing like five cups and two plates. So, some kids are very slow, some are very fast, some are this and this, some are being bullied, so some are, some, some people take advantage, they keep, some people keep bullying our children. So once we discover there is a very, very serious uh, sub, uh, weakness in them or an area where they need support, this is the time to use and support them. Number three is cook with them, focusing on dishes they do not know how to cook. This is that the past is that Ivy cooked flour for us. She cut the onions, everything, everything. I was like, let me, what else, you know? After, when the oil has cooked, you add onions, you add this and this and this. Of course, I used to come in to her, but since then she has never forgotten what we did. And when I feel like, whenever she comes like, mommy, today we are having flour. Mm -hmm. Can I please make it? I'm like, yes, of course she's five and I'm always there to make sure that she doesn't get burned or she doesn't uh, mess up things. But I'm always there. If it comes to making juice, you know, she knows how to slice everything, put them in the blender and then make the juice, sieve it, um, serve us and the rest, she knows where it goes, it goes in the fridge. So it's very, very important. And that's one of the most amazing at time in the course of the week. It happens weekly, like every week. We have that day where we cook together. And we have those days. I think love's helping me a lot. She'll be like, Mommy, look tired. You've been doing this and this and this. Please, can I do the dishes? Sure, you can do the dishes. I should do dishes for me. At five years old, I can cook, can serve us, and can do dishes. Even when it comes to making her bed, Ivy loves making her bed. You know, it's something that she has always struggled with. I knew, I knew she needed support there. So this takes us to back uh, where uh, we need to, to, to find areas where our children need some support. So Ivy loves making beds. You know, she, she didn't know how to do it, but now she knows. Because it's something that I've really guided her in. And I'm so proud of her and so many other things that I might not be able to mention at this time. The other thing is visit grandparents and other members of the extended family. So it's a tradition in my home. I like make sure like every holiday or some weekends, like Friday, like Friday, I drop them off with the twins as well. Yeah, the one the one year and a half. So sometimes actually there are those days I really drop them off to 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 to, Arella, to my mom or to their grand to, to, to their paternal grand uh, grandparents and all that. So my in laws. So. It's 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 part of my tradition that during the holidays I drop off my kids to, to go and experience another lifestyle. And as we speak right now, yes, they have not they actually they have been sickly so that's why I delayed to drop them. I just want them to yeah, it's it's one way to to engage with them. They need to know other people, they need to experience other lifestyle, they need to learn other things, other principles, other um, skills from other people. This is this is one of the most most serious issues that is disturbing most of the children in a home. 
Do not go to sleep and leave the children watching television. Now, just imagine uh, the kids have TV in their room. We've seen this happening. Kids have TVs in their room. So, of course, they will switch it off. They will, they will make you believe that, okay, they have switched off. They are off to bed. So, the moment you go to your bed, they will just reduce the volume. And then they watch TV until 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 5 a.m. So, for us, whether school days or no school days, I is always heading to bed by 8 p.m. If, 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 if something comes up, the letter should be 9. Actually, that's during school days. But during school days, it has to be 8. And by 8, no TV. No kids are allowed to watch TV after 8 p.m. So parents, parents take note of that. Do not go to sleep. So most of the parents will leave. We go to sleep because we are so tired. We feel like we are so tired. Some parents even just do it because they don't see any harm in that or they don't see anything but that can come out of that. Remember these kids have been watching TV from morning up to almost in the next morning. So parents, 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 do not go to sleep and let your children as, and leave the children watching television. That, sh that is out. Teach them, actually give them the time frame. Okay, give them the time when TV is supposed to be switched off. Limit gadget use as this robs precious time from our children. There is. I know some of you, for, some of you be like, no, no, what? You know, my children have to join it in the gadgets and all that. So uh, we are living uh, at the time where things are very, uh, where things are very affordable. Things are available to us everywhere. So whether, uh, of course, there are those parents who be like. Um, strict enough not to give their children gadgets or for those who have the gadgets they always give them in the morning their gadgets after doing their work and then uh, have maybe the holder with the gadgets and then later on in the evening before they go to bed they collect all the gadgets so that's another that's our uh, also we have such parents and also we have parents who really don't care parents those are some of the ways that you should really put into consideration this holiday and it's really really going to help you save a lot it's going to help you engage your children in different activities it's going to save you a lot and it's going to prepare these children for greater opportunities